OK, cool. So just to make sure, you can see me talking right there? Yeah. All right. And you can see a little thing going on when I talk. That means the volume's on, so you want to make sure you get volume. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to talk about, we don't have a lot of time, but what I'm going to go through with you is just some basic operations of complex numbers. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, conjugates, and division. We'll talk about the standard form, the, re, the, re, the meaning behind complex numbers in another video and um, notes for you guys. But for right now, I just want to talk about the operations. And when going with the operations of complex numbers, you can see we have this little i here, right? So without going into the understanding of what i is, when we're doing our operations, for the first part, I want you just to treat the operations like they're a variable, all right? So for addition and subtraction, the rule of diff, diff, addition and subtraction is you can only combine like terms. So that means I can only add my numbers, and I can only add my um, other numbers that are attached with my i, which we'll, we'll said treat like a variable. So there's actually a formula which we'll go through. But for this one, I'm just going to do 6 plus negative 5 plus negative 2i plus 6i. All right? So 6 plus negative 5 is going to be 1 plus negative 2i plus 4i, or 6i is 4i. Understand? Pretty basic, right? Combine like terms. Add your real numbers, and then add your uh, complex. So this is just a watered down version, what we're going to do. Next one is multiplication. OK? Multiplication, you can, use a, uh, you can use FOIL. You can also use a table if you want to. OK? To multiply, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 2 is 4i. 6 times 2 is negative 18i. Negative 3i times 2 is a negative 6i squared. Right? So we have negative 6i squared uh, minus 18i plus 4i plus 12. Combine like terms, right? So you get a negative uh, 14i. So for right now, we're just going to leave it like this, OK? So that's going to get into, hold on, not yet. I'm the, um, I'll get to that in a second. Once I, once I say division, then we'll go. Okay. Yes? What if we know like if, if we know how to simplify that too much? Yes, but I'm going to explain that in t minus 30 seconds, <coughs> OK? So the next thing I want you guys to think about is your conjugate. And actually, not 30 seconds, probably like a couple minutes. But the next thing I want to talk about is the conjugates, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, we did this in our problem. x squared minus 5 equals 0, right? You guys remember this problem we talked about? And when we solved, OK, we said x squared equals 5 square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 5, right? We had the plus and the minus, all right? You guys remember that? OK. So one thing I want you guys to understand, we're going to talk about that with zeros, but I want you guys to see that. If you guys remember, when we did rational, rational denominators, when you had a denominator with a rational number, we always took the conjugate. And to rationalize the denominator, when you had a binomial, what we do is we took the conjugate. So the conjugate is going to be your exact same binomial with the exact same terms, but now with the opposite operation. We'll talk about my example here in just a second. So the conjugate of this number of 6 plus 3i is 6 minus 3i. That's what we call the conjugate pair. Then the next thing what I want to do is I want to show you guys, if I multiply conjugate pairs, we know this is a reference of two pairs. Or what is it called? A difference of two squares, right? So a difference of two squares. You guys can multiply it like this and spend all the time doing that if you want to. But a difference of two squares, you notice that the first two terms are the same, so you multiply them, which is 36. The last two terms are the same, so you multiply them, and you get negative 9i squared. All right? So let's talk then about i, because now we're at the point where we need to discuss what is i and what is i squared, right? So when, let's go back to this problem. Let's say I said x, um, let's just do the easy one, x plus 1 equals 0. So to solve for this, I subtract 1. I get x squared equals negative 1, square root, square root. x equals the square root of negative 1. If you guys think about this, you need to think about what two numbers multiply to give you negative 1. In the real number system, we don't have two number, we don't have a number that multiplied by itself gives us negative 1. 
right? So we can't look in the real number system. We now have to look into the imaginary number system. So what we call this is i for imaginary number system, all right? Now, here's the important thing to notice. So if I say i equals square root of negative 1, right? i is really what the term is equal to square root of negative 1. If I square both sides, I get i squared is equal to, now what's the square root of negative, or what's the square, what's the square root of negative 1 squared? Negative 1. Because remember, it's just the square root and the square are going to cancel out, right? OK. So now, ladies and gentlemen, if you know that i is square root of negative 1 and i squared is equal to negative 1, we can actually plug this back in for our problems. So let's go over here. This is just going to be rewritten, actually, as our um, complex number. We're going to keep it in that form. i is OK. But here, you guys can see we can rewrite i squared as negative 1, right? So that's exactly what you're going to want to do. So I can say negative negative 6. Instead of i squared, let's write negative 1 minus 14i plus 12. Well, negative 6 times negative 1 is a positive 6. Positive 6 plus 12 is uh, 18. So my final answer is um, 18 minus 14i. All right, and we always like to write our real number in front of our uh, imaginary number, as we'll talk about in a second. Then here, i squared again, right? It keeps on coming back, i squared. It's a negative 1. So that gives us what? Um, 36, or negative 9 times negative 1 is a positive 9, so plus 9, so it's going to be 45. Now here's the question I want you guys to notice. Um, or the question I want you to answer, but just to think about, actually. If you guys think about this, if you look at when I multiply a number by its conjugate, what happened to my i? It went away. Right? Yeah, we multiplied it out. So taking a number and a conjugate, it's important to know the conjugate of a number, because if you can multiply a number by its conjugate, it equals 45. Now let's talk about addition. So let's take a look at division, all right? And let's go back through old school. If I said 3 divided by square root of 2, all right? When I'm looking at 3 divided by square root of 2, do you guys remember what you're supposed to do here? Remember when we like math, they're like, hey, always when you see that, you got to do what? Remember? Multiply by what? The denominator, right? And we called that rationalizing the denominator, right? So you got to make sure you rationalize your denominator. Now, <laughs> Here comes the question with it. Um, why do we rationalize the denominator? Well, think about it. Square root of 2, is that a real or is that a rational or an irrational number? <laughs> irrational. That means it goes on forever, right? So if it goes on forever, does it make sense to divide a number that goes on forever into another number? No, right? You, you can't divide into an irrational number. So we get the irrational number off the bottom. To do that, we get rid of the square root. Well, how do you get rid of the square root? You multiply by the square root, right? And when you do that, you get your answer, 3 square root of 2 divided by 2. Notice, rationalize the denominator, got rid of our square root of 2. Same thing, if I had 3, uh, well, we'll talk about it here. Same thing, um, this one, 3 divided by 2 plus square root of 2. This is what I was trying to mention before. What would you multiply here? 2 minus. You actually multiply by the conjugate again. But it's the same thing, because when you multiply that out, you guys get rid of the square root. So if I'm telling you here's on my bottom of my division problem, i is imaginary, right? It's the square root. Really, it's the square root of negative 1. So does it make sense to divide by i or the square root of negative 1? Does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense, right? So the same thing. What we're going to have to do is divide or not divide, but we have to get rid of the i. So what in my previous example did I tell you how to get rid of the i? You want to multiply by the conjugate, right? Or the conjugate of the denominator. Pardon the interruption. Please turn your television sets on to channel 6 for the Mustang News. OK, and when we do that, just create a property. So you get 8 plus 4i all over. This is difference of two squares. 16 minus 4i squared. 
And then remember, you have i squared, which is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. Positive 4 plus 6 is 20. So your final answer is 8 plus 4i divided by 20. Um, you could break that in to, yes, you have to write this in standard form. You could write it as 8 over 20 plus 4i over 20. And then you could reduce each one of those. Uh, so you'd want to divide by 4, which would give you 2 fifths plus um, i over uh, 5. Yep, and that'd be your final answer. OK. Same button, Tajay. That'd be good.